All right, so let's look at said here first. And I'm just going to go ahead and launch a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and launch uh, gedit. I can start typing. I don't even have to click up here, which is nice. I can just start typing to do a search. So that makes life a little easier. Um, yeah, it is pretty cool, actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the DNS server here because that's where I started doing some sed commands. And so here's one command I did with sed right here. Um, I have another one uh, over here. And I'm just going to go over some of these different options here. And I'm going to break this over into a, a separate file here and type it up. And uh, also, I'm going to, and then when we do the DNS server, we'll actually use sed to actually automate, um, automatically edit the file, configuration files to a certain degree. I was playing with it a lot last night, and then I just got frustrated. I was like, this is taking too long. So only did part of it <laughs> for sed. And the rest of it, we're going to hand edit because it was just too much headaches. Um, I'll show you where it gets to be a headache. But anyways, um, there's certain things that are really easy to do with said, and there are other things that are hard as I'll get out to do with it. Just because, and that's when I'm like, I really want to use Python or something like that in this place, because uh, it's very powerful what you can do with Python. You can do anything you want pretty much. Um, now let me go ahead and do that, and let's blow this up a bit. Okay, so uh, a few things here I would like to point out, and that is that. And this is also in your book, but scattered throughout chapter 27 or 28, whichever it is. I can't remember which one it is. On the shell scripting one, uh, towards the uh, last half of the chapter, it's uh, all over the place. I clicked that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just save this as, let's just call this sed.sh. And I'm just doing this in order to make it highlight, although I'm sure there's some other benefits to this too sed.sh all right so there's sed and if I do pound sign exclamation mark slash bin slash bash like so all right so sed's got a couple different things here and I'd like to point it out to you and uh, a number of them are really useful yeah. sed yeah sed no 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 sed not not like you're talking it's uh it's basically a, a stream editor where you know you can pass data to it and you can edit it. So that's the other thing you can do. Uh, you can redirect something from grep into sed and actually have sed go in and edit it and then kick it out as something else. Blah blah blah. You can do that. You can do crazy stuff like that. You can, you can do anything you want for a redirection type thing. So um, oh, and also these regular expressions also work with grep also. So a bunch of you learned a big huge grep video it was hour long or whatnot, but um, this has some more stuff to it too. So, um, a couple of things. Uh, the period here matches any character. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this in a pound sign here in front of it. Uh, to comment this out because I don't want to actually execute. Uh, but let me just tab that over and say, um, let's see here, any single character match. Uh, and this, mat this matters. Um, believe it or not, this stuff also works with Python too. So, this matching stuff, however, is identical in Python. So also how they do their uh, character string match. They use regular expressions uh, straight from Linux. Why? Because the guy who developed it d uses Linux. Goodio, he uses Linux. That's, that's his main operating system. Uh, Python was created on Linux and then basically made to work on the other operating systems. So uh, you got to realize it was born on Linux with many other things. Or that, or something. Star, you're already familiar with it. I use it all the time. Uh, this is any number of characters. Um, you know, and, and any character. So, any number of character uh, matches. So, you know, basically all characters, if you will. Yeah, if that makes sense. Uh, pound sign, space. Here, uh, I'm going to do another one. This is uh, special. This is bracks, brackets. Now, I want to point this out. This is one of those that really mess with you, maybe. Uh, when you're looking at this, you're going, oh, I'm familiar with this. This is what we use in the other part. Yeah, not really. Um, sorry, that's just ugly. I'm going to keep it like that, and I'll just tab this over separately. Uh, and this is a um, special uh, advanced uh, matching system. So uh, this gets into character sequences. 
uh, I'll say the fine character sequences. That's a better way of putting it. Um, and what happens with this, I think that's how you spell sequences. Um, yeah, it is. I never trust myself uh, on this stuff. Um, you could also say re regular expressions, et cetera, um, defined within the brackets. Okay, so now you're used to seeing it um, like this, where I say if here, space, bracket, space, you know, something here, bracket, whatever, and it's all spaced, can't have them touching anything, blah, blah, blah. The reason you can't have them touching is because this one right here that we're going over right now, regular expressions, they do touch. It's totally different if they're touching versus if they're not touching, okay? So this one's the equivalent right here of the if test type setup right here, whereas this one is not even remotely the same thing. This one, on the other hand, could be something like this, A to Z, and then I could say A to Z, and that would be all lowercase characters and all uppercase characters. Does that make sense? Yes, everything touches inside of this. No spaces. If you put a space in here, it will not work on this. Yeah, let me put that. No spaces. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's make that. Um, yeah. So uh, that's pretty useful, and I want you to realize that you can also do special names and all that stuff. We'll get into it in a bit here. Um, there's some special things with that. Uh, this one's really interesting. And this is the caret symbol, and the caret symbol uh, is important. And this is actually on your final exam, so study this. Uh, but the caret symbol is the beginning of a string. It denotes the beginning of a string. Uh, so what does that mean? Um, well, basically, say I had something like. Uh, Jill went to the store. I don't know, something stupid like that, right? And it's in quotes because it's a string, right? Or it doesn't even have to be in quotes, actually. Let's put, let's say this isn't a file. It's just a line in the file, right? Because that's a string inside of a text file. Beginning of the string would be right here at Jill. Where's the capital J right here? This is the very beginning of the string. Right there. Does that make sense? By putting that... Um, uh, I just said it. A carrot. We can call it carrot top if you like. You know, doesn't matter. <laughs> but basically, um, that defines the very beginning of the string. So this is really useful, especially if you're working with like Python or something like that. And you're doing a web address, and you want to find the beginning of the string, uh, or the beginning of the web address, and then you want to find what other parts uh, of the web address there is, and to find that, so you can redirect it to a function or something of that nature. You can use uh, the uh, basically the carrot. Use it all the time, man. This is something uh, you would actually use quite often. Carrot is uh, a very uh, regular type of... Um, so, let me just ask you one question real quick. These, these functions that you're describing here are ways of using set to go find something within, say, a file or... Right. We're going to get into that. Um, it's not as simple as you're saying it. Uh, it's going to be more complicated. We're going to work in baby steps on this um, because once I start showing you some of the expressions, it gets kind of crazy. Um, but uh, let's work in baby steps right now. Um, it's not as simple as just saying a period or whatever for 10. Actually, it's more complicated than that. And if you were wanting 10, you would actually declare 10 straight up. You're going to ask a question? Yeah. Went to the store. What's that? The caret is going to put you right here before the J. That's where we would actually enter it in that file, in the script. No, you don't enter it in the script there. This is what it would find. It would find the beginning of the line for the thing you were searching. So if you're searching a text file or whatever, it would find the beginning of the line for each line and what it searches. And we would start looking for our search criteria based on the beginning of the line because it would require the beginning of the line for it to be a match at the beginning of the line going on. Meaning you couldn't find, like, say, for instance, okay, let's put it this way, okay? Say I was searching for went, right? But I put a 
caret in front of it for my search criteria like this, okay? Uh, this would not match. That would not be a match. Even though went is in there, it has to be at the beginning of the thing. So it literally has to be like that for a match, which would be the beginning of the line. The second one's a match. The first one is not. Does that make sense? So it's actually a matching criteria, if you will. This, again, can be used with grep or awk also. Yeah, but it's going to be more complicated than that. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into it. All right, technically it would be this right here. You're going to hate me for doing this. All right, slash S here. Um, and Oh, sorry, I'm taking that back. Sorry, S here, slash boom. All right, and then I do carrot top here, and then I do went, and then I say slash, and then I would say something like um, from there I would say, um, I don't know whatever I want to say. Uh, you know, maybe I want to be a space in front of it, right? So then I'd do a space, went, and then another slash like that, and then I'd end that, and then I'd say the direction of the file here from there, maybe like home slash um, student slash scripts slash uh, whatever dot txt for the searching criteria, and there you go. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. Okay, um, I'm building up to that. But anyways, <laughs> but essentially, that's a really, really simple example, uh, which is great because it's hard to even find simple examples on anywhere. Um, and also, I tried looking this stuff up on the internet and couldn't find as a single good write-up on this stuff. Uh, it's very confusing. So um, I tried to find my big uh, book on Shell. I couldn't find it. I found my reduced Shell book. This one works okay. It's Shell Programming, 24 Hours by Sam's. We may have it on the virtual library. I'm not sure, um, but regardless, uh, that one's decent. It's not. It's nothing like shelves by example, but shelves by example is out of print, so you can't even get it anymore. But it's over a thousand pages, uh, and some of the stuff has changed since then too, so it's not even viable anymore. The other one is uh, not question mark. I'm sorry, dollar sign. And you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, that's part of a variable. Dollar sign means something completely different when we're talking about regular expressions. Regular expressions are defined between, um, you know, these slashes right here, which is different from these slashes here. Anyways, uh, the, the spaces, the expressions within here defines a special uh, regular expression, okay, as it's called for searching criteria. Okay, so the dollar sign there, and um, this is really useful. This defines the end of the line, or denotes the end of a string, or end of a line, or whatever. Does that make sense? I say end of a string because it's more accurate than end of a line, uh, because say you're dealing with a web address or something like that, that would not be end of a line because it's actual, it's just a string. So it's the end of the string to be more accurate uh, than what's written uh, in some documentation. But they got the right idea. And then this slash, like I was just talking about, is different than the other one. Now, this slash is not part of um, – this one is the escape character sequence here. So just like you have in just every programming language you can think about, think about you know, escape uh, character um, – this allows you to do something literal. Like, for instance, say I need to actually have it look at dollar sign. I mean for it to actually search the dollar sign and not the end of the line. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do a slash dollar sign, and now it's going to actually treat it as a dollar sign and not the end of the line. Does that make sense? So saying that this right here, dang on it. <laughs> This right here would be, you know, completely different, and this, of course, is all be held in side of quotes. Would be completely different than um, this right here. Now, this one's kind of interesting right here because this actually means a blank line right here, because essentially we're saying nothing becomes between the beginning and the end of the line, so therefore it's a blank line. That would let us find all the blank lines in the file, for instance. 
We could delete them. We could do stuff like that if we wanted to. Thus letting us remove all the blank lines in a file and put all the lines together. You can do weird stuff like that. Uh, D is the, well, I'll get into that in a bit. Um, <laughs> I'll get into that in just a second, but uh, yeah. So there's that. Um, one other thing I want to add in here, just because uh, a lot of these documentations do not make this apparent. This right here devote, denotes the actual um, the uh, actual um, regular expression. Begin and end. So the first slash is the begin of the regular expression, and the last slash is the end of it. Does it make sense to everybody? So that's why I was doing that triple one earlier when I was defining it. That's because I was doing two different sequences, one in here and then one in there, saying find this and replace it with this right here. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's what that's all about. Um, Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah, we were going in and finding the where line started with went and replace it with space went. It's correct. Within that file that you did. Yeah. Right. Okay. Within the file that I designated. Yeah. So we're going to get into that right now a bit here. And uh, there's some definitely some awesome stuff here. Um, uh, common character sets. Let's look at a few of these here with the whole breakdown right here. So, um, as an example of this one here, uh, I just feel like uh, should we go through it? So let's look at a few of these here. A dash Z close bracket versus uh, A dash Z like that. And I know I, I showed one of them earlier. These are each one you wouldn't put, you know, well, you can put them like this. This actually is a legal thing to do. Uh, again, I can do A uh, dash Z in lowercase and then A dash Z uppercase like that. I can also do another bracket set here if I want here and do 0 through 9. I don't have to do 0 through 9. I could do 0 through 3 if I wanted to, for instance, or whatever. I'm just saying that's your upper range because 0 through 9 covers every digit if you wanted to, if that makes sense. We can define particular digits if you so desire. A dash Z dash Z. Oh, sorry. Zero dash nine. All right. And that's the different example. And this would be all lowercase characters, all uppercase characters, and all numbers, all digits. And this only denotes a single character. So, for instance, if I wanted to do something like an IP address or what? Well, not necessarily an IP address, but let's just say, let's talk about phone number, for instance. I would literally do zero uh, here, dash nine, and then I'm going to copy and paste that because I am too lazy to type all that over and over again. So, dash. <laughs> one, two, three, four. There we go. And that would be a phone number. Yeah. Like seven seven zero oh, five five five, you know five 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 five. <laughs> 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 Call me right up any time. <laughs> yeah. Is that your real phone number? Sure. It's nine eleven five four three four. Yeah, no problem. Um. <laughs> So, you know, there's some definite uh, nice capabilities here with some of the stuff. Um, it gets interesting on how it works here. So, there, there's, uh, hmm, let's see here. What would be, so some stuff can get kind of complicated. Let's do patterns right now. Let's talk about said here a bit. Um, so here, so this was regular expressions here. Let me break this out huh well this is regular expressions that which you can use with said you can also use this with um between the side you could also use this with grep and you can also use this with awk 
Okay, so this can be used with several things. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as what's in Python too. Only Python's got a few extra things like W plus, etc. I'm not going to get into that, uh, but it's got some other things besides this. So uh, maybe we we'll get a little fancy here with this. Oh, I know. I have to do it. All right. It makes things so much more professional when you do it like this. Right? All right, let's do that right there. Let me give it a pound sign to it. So it's... There we go. Well, technically, I should have pound signs going all the way down, but I'm too lazy. All right, so. <laughs> But that makes it a little easier to read, anyways. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here and grab this top set here. All right. There we go. And in here, I'm going to change this from regular expressions to uh, said. Yeah, let's just do it in all caps. Normally it wouldn't be all caps, but whatever. All right. And one of them is going to be P. And P prints the line. Uh, and this can be useful at times. Sometimes it's not. Uh, I'll tell you what one I use almost always is just S. But anyways, we'll get into that in just a second. D is delete. the line so basically on the search criteria when it finds whatever it's looking for it deletes it deletes the whole line that it found it on so if it found like went or whatever at the beginning of the line right. it wouldn't have deleted Jill went blah 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 to the store it would have deleted went to the store because yeah. Uh, well, it'll take the went with it. <laughs> it's going to take the whole line. <laughs> I'll show you in a second. Yeah. Um. Actually, let me do underscores so that way no one thinks you can put spaces in this thing. There's no spaces. Well, I mean, you can put a space inside a regular expression. All right, I'll put space. <laughs> Whatever. Starting to think about, wait a minute, I just did that, and I did it in the other thing, too, and it works. Um, anyways, <laughs> my apologies. I'm not thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah, I talk to myself all the time. Sometimes I talk myself into things, too. It depends on how well I can convince myself of things. All right, so from there... Um, no, like for instance, I could do a sed right here, dash um, e, and then uh, in here, um, I could do uh, a d here, and then inside those brackets like that, and then whatever the file is, you know, slash home, slash student, slash scripts, blah, 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 slash whatever, dot txt. All right, so say I wanted to delete only the went from the, well not wet in yeah well in a second so say I wanted to do uh, something like that right there right yeah so say I wanted that in there well it's fine the, del the D is going to let me actually delete that pattern if you will um, I'm sorry, I don't put the D at the beginning. That's S substitution. The D goes at the end just with a P. All right, so this is kind of weird, but like the D here goes at the end. Let me show you. Sorry, like that, not the beginning. I forgot. S goes at the beginning. It's the only one that goes at the beginning. D and P go at the end. Why is it inconsistent? I don't know. I'm not the one who developed said. So, but it is. So those two go at 
the end of the line there for what I'm trying to match. Yes. Exactly. So basically, it would delete it to the store versus Jill went to the store. All right. So basically, what this means is that went to the store, this whole line is going to be toast. It's going to delete it. It's going to be gone. Whereas Jill went to the store, will not get deleted at all. You would use a substitution. So in order to do yeah, in order to do that, you would do a sed here dash e space slash sorry, uh, sorry tick single tick uh, s here one two three slashes right here for substitution. Here we're going to do an upper uh, caret here went here and then I would replace that with nothing. So <laughs> quite literally. Um, and of course I'd need to define my location of my file or whatever too. Now something I want to point out is this gets displayed to the screen and does not edit the actual file itself. It displays its output result to the screen. So if you want to actually save this to a file, you have to redirect it to a file with a greater than sign. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That'd be a pending. You wouldn't want to pend. Yeah. Right. Which, if it already exists, it's going to keep appending the entire file over and over and over again, which is not what you want. Um, so let's do this as a for real. We'll create whatever script. Could have called it stupid example. That would work out too, right? <laughs> whatever. Dot txt. So unprofessional. That's why I love it. All right. We all have to love something unprofessional. All right. So here we are with this. Um, and then we also had that one for whatever reason, uh, closed without saving. Yeah, it sounds great. All right, so there's whatever.txt, and say I want to actually do something with this. Well, as I said before, you want to see what would happen if I were to delete this line right here. So assuming I'm not full of it, um, <laughs> or more likely I didn't think through something, and then I'm going to be like crying about it later here. Uh, it should be all right here with this. Um, wow, that's not much output, huh? Hold on a second. Let me cat whatever slash home slash. No, not shouldn't be. Not for this one. For other stuff, yeah. Oh, it says it's empty. How about that? I don't know. I thought I just saved the stupid thing. Did I? <laughs> what? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, it wasn't saved. There's a moment of panic. There we go. So Jill went to the store, period. Yeah, that was fun, let me tell you. I'm going, what happened? <laughs> yeah, it took out, yeah, I went to the store, deleted the whole line with that entry that matched it. Whereas Jill went to the store, didn't get deleted because it was, went wasn't at the beginning of the line. So see how powerful this stuff is? It just really can have a lot of control on it. And when you start getting to some of the stuff, you can really get crazy with it. Like I've seen lines that are like an entire, uh, it's like an entire line long of just the expression alone for something type things. Very easily done. Um, and you can break it down. So things get interesting on some of the stuff when you really start getting crazy with it. Um, it doesn't take much to get crazy with it either. So, uh, you know, you're just like rambling something on or whatever. Um, you know, this is something an interviewer might like to throw out there to stump you type stuff. So regular expressions is something, you know, maybe not the regular Joe knows type thing on Linux, but they're going to want it because then you can do crazy stuff with it. And so if they throw something out here, at least you'll know what it is. And 
you know, and if you see it and you're like, ah, oh, I can't remember what that is, you can tell the interviewer. Um, actually, I do know this stuff and I studied it, but I can't remember what that is at the moment. Can you mind if I go look it up, you know, and then get right back to you after the interview? And do something like that. Because, um, you know, don't sit there. If you can't figure it out and, like, if you can't remember one of them, tell them what you do remember and work it out so he knows you're not, just let's say he knows he's foggy on it or whatever. And then tell him, I need to look this one up because I can't remember exactly. You know, or something of that nature. Of course, if you don't have a clue, well, you know, it's a whole other ball game. But, um, <laughs> but at least you know that that goes a long ways. You know, it's there's a difference between you know, and they'll throw stuff out there on purpose just to like, trip you up because they want to see if they can trip people up or not, and how you deal with it actually is part of the interview process. All right, so here's this one right here, and you were asking me how to remove the word went with nothing, and there it is, went to the store, it's gone, but it only removed the one that was at the beginning of the line, because I put, yeah, see, whereas if I took out the little carrot in front of it, what's it going to do, guys? Yeah, but no. Right, because I didn't say beginning of line anymore. Right. Right. And then, as I was saying earlier, I can take something like this, redirect it into uh, how about I could care dot txt, and we'll generate that file. Okay. And so now the end result, if I cat um, I could care, first off, if I could get into scripts, that'd be really useful. Uh, if I'd stop catting CD, that would help too, right? Gosh, I started one thought and then continued a different one. All right, so <laughs> I could care. TXT. What? What did I name it? I thought I did. I could care. I did. I could care. You know what? I was in a totally different place. I was in scripts when I did that. So I was in the right place. Ta-da, there it is. Now it's a file. So again, it doesn't edit the actual file. If I cat whatever here inside of scripts, sorry, uh, whatever.txt like that, it didn't change. See? It's still there, intact. Completely. This, is, uh, this was the original file that got edited, and you may notice that the file did not change. And then this is the one that got edited. Now, something you might be thinking, well, why can't I just redirect it back to the file that I'm actually streaming from? I know that's what's going through some people's heads. Some people, I don't even know what you're talking about, dude. Well, that's a whole other ballgame, but we'll be all right here in just a second. So what if I said, instead of that, you're probably wondering, what if I did the other thing? Uh, whatever, right here. And, you know, this matters right here as far as that goes. I think I'll just even show you because I don't care. All right, this is not going to work. Check this out. You're thinking, oh, it's just going to remove the went, right? Let's see if it does. Why didn't I just go ahead and like hit my up arrow? That'd have been so much easier. It's blank. It's empty. Why? Because it, <laughs> it can't do it. You can't write to the same file you're reading from it simultaneously. Does that make sense? If you do, it will wipe out the whole file and there'll be nothing in it. So don't do that. You'd have to save it to a separate file and then copy the file over afterwards. You cannot stream and read from the same file simultaneously. It's just like regular programming. Say you use like a programming language like Python or whatever. You have to read in the entire file, then you can write it out. Same things happen here. So while we're reading it in with said, and it's writing stuff out per line, okay? As it reads it in, it writes it out. Well, that's a problem if you're writing back to the same thing you're reading from. You end up with nothing in your file afterwards. So you can't do that. So what I would have to do, quite literally, if I wanted the result that I that was wanting after that would be cp-f for instance for forcing it so that way it doesn't ask us do you really want to copy this file blah 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 yes I do um, then I can say I could care 
if I could spell it, <laughs> I could care even more, right? TXT, and then I say dot slash scripts here, and then slash uh, whatever. TXT, like so. And now this is going to give me back. I'm not tight yet. That's it. I'm not going through that. See that? So I wrote out to this file for my proper output, and then I copied it over afterwards. That is what will work. Does that make sense? So uh, just as an example here, um, <laughs> you can actually kick out line numbers with dash n too, by the way. So which is nice. Um, let me see if I can't pull up one of these where it's just like freaking crazy. Um, because it really gets quite interesting. Oh yeah, and by the way, when we're doing the set here, we're doing the dash E and whatnot with it. Um, we can do multiples of these, so we can keep doing dash E uh, after that first set there for multiple sets of uh, searches. So essentially what I could do is I could keep going with it. I could keep doing dash E's here and keep doing additional sets of searches and do different edits together on a single set. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and that makes it really nice and useful because then you don't have to constantly do a bunch of craziness with it. Uh, so your sed commands, your awk commands can get really ridiculously long. Uh, and, and be aware of that because that's very likely to happen with this stuff. So uh, let's see here. Where's a really crazy awesome example that would be great? Um, Oh, I saw some uh, that they had online that were just absolutely nuts. I'm sitting there going, wow. Just wow. Okay, uh, for instance, here's an example uh, from this book here. Um, all right, so this is an example of one of the ones they, they wrote here to so just give you some ideas. So they did SED space uh, in quotes here. Let's get this party started here. Dash E space, and then we're going to do a substitution with this. And uh, in this case, they have. Let's go ahead and get that going. All right, Peach. All right, first of all, Peach was misspelled, so they're going to fix it. So that was the misspelling, and then we're going to replace it with the correct spelling, like so. Right, and then you can do another dash E right here, right, for another set expression S, and then. Uh, one, two, three, and then this one's a little more fun right here because then we're going to say star or space star to be more accurate, and then in brackets zero through nine, like so. And then I'm going to do another one here, boom, like that, and then another star, and then we're going to escape a period and then we're going to do another 0 through 9 another 0 through 9 a dollar sign to note the end of the line and we're going to replace that with an actual dollar sign and then an ampersand like so sorry Yeah, it's not bad. It really isn't when you break it down. Um, so again, in the first part here, the the peach is misspelled to replace it with the proper spelling of the peach. Here they're saying any number of characters and then one number, then another number, and then any number of characters after that, right? And then a period that comes after that, and then any uh, and then any number, but it's only a single digit, of course. Any number again as a single digit, and then. Uh, the end of the line. Whereas over here, we're going to replace all that with a dollar sign ampersand. And when I say a dollar sign ampersand, I mean the actual dollar sign because we escaped it. Right, that's what the slash dollar sign is.
Well, if it helps you, I can type out what you're substituting. So on the first one here, when the moment it finds peach like that, it's going to replace it with peach. And the second one, you're like, well, yeah, that one's easy. Uh, true. But the second one here would have been had to start with, uh, well, whatever. Um, like, for instance, uh, for instance, I could say something like uh, uh, file double O dot 15. That would be a match. And it would get replaced with. <laughs> yeah. I should be correct on that. Because the ampersand isn't a special character as far as I remember. Uh, yeah, because it's any character. See the star? Star means any number of characters. So file here, but then we have digits here. A single digit. In this case, I could do a zero and a zero if I want to. It could be something else. It doesn't matter. Then there has to come a dot. Why? Because it's escaped out, right? So any number of characters between then if I wanted to, or it doesn't have to be. This would be a match for it if it does. Um, and then, like, you know, 15 here would be another number here. So one matches that one. Five matches that one. And then, um, oh, you know what? I can't have the dot old in there. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, I would leave it alone. No, it won't work because um, dollar sign is the end of the line. So, yeah, it would have to stop right at the 15 there or whatever. So this is, this is legal here, but the other part isn't. Um, you know, and then here I could have something else here. For instance, I could say old like that. If I wanted to, and that would be viable, or should be viable, anyways, because of the star. But you know, I can't put it at the end. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is a really good example of that. Um, I just really like it like that, preferring that right at the moment. Um, all right, so pointed out here um, we have the dollar sign here in this case is the end of the line right because it's not escaped when we put the slash in front of it for the backslash here uh, in front of the dollar sign it means dollar sign not the end of the line it just means the dollar sign character an escape character uh, the, the backslash lets you take something that has a special meaning and make it treat it just as a dollar sign or just as period, for instance, like the period of it at the end of the sentence. Yeah, say, for instance, say I wanted to do this right here. Say I want to do said dash e space uh, here in quotes, uh, double slashes here, d, etc. The uh, slash, oh, I'm not going to type that out. I'm sorry, I'm going to be lazy. Here, it'll make sense in one second here. This is a really simple example because this is a complex example. So showing a simple example a lot of times makes it easier to understand. So, um, okay, went to the store. Now, I can't just say period here. This isn't going to work, right? Because period means any character, single character. Okay, so I can't do that. So I need to escape it so that it looks at it as a period in the, at the end of that sentence. So in order to get rid of its special meaning, I use the escape character like that. And then now, right, and it'll delete that line. Does that make sense? Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking for the actual period in the sentence and not a special character, a regular expression period, special character. Yeah, so that's how we deal with special characters. Is that making sense to everybody?
All right, and if you thought that was bad, Ock's way worse. All right, because <laughs> Ock uses regular expressions plus conditional statements, loops, things of that nature. Print f, which is stuff. Uh, we have talked about loops and if statements, but it actually uses it inside of Ock. Plus, we have not talked about print f, which gives you some additional capabilities beyond echo. Print f, I'm like C type thing, C programming, but they actually have a print f command inside of shell scripting. Um, stuff so you could use print f instead of echo and it has extra capabilities that echo doesn't have echo is just nice and simple print f is like the creme de la creme the most complicated one that lets you do anything you like type deal compared to echo it's way more powerful more or less and echo is just like the simple one where you just want to kick something out and not have to think about it type thing yeah type deal but it doesn't have some of the abilities that you may need sometimes with Printf, um, but yeah, just as a real quick uh, one, if you want, there's uh, anytime you want to like you know how we're doing this file redirection. If you, anytime you ever want, and you want the process ID number at the, the name of the file right there. Put uh, double uh, dollar signs like that, and it'll actually put the process ID number as the file when it saves it. From the save file. So a lot of times administrators will do that in order to basically uh, create individual files based on when it was ran for the program. Each time the program is run, it, you get a different ID number form. So therefore, you can actually track it when they're executed and everything. So some network network admins will do that. Yeah. Oh well, as soon as it's done executing, it dies after it's done running this. So as soon as the PID is done, it's gone. It exits for these commands. So if you type in like CP blah blah blah, it runs for that one mil, however many milliseconds it runs for, right? And then it's gone. So it comes and goes like that. Uh, but it does lead you, that way you can capture the process ID number if you like. Any questions on this? Or is this all gelling? I like the shoe commercial. All right, so are you gelling? All right, so gelling like a felon. All right, so with all that, and I'm just going to resave this before it removes it. That is said. Okay. All right. I'm going to go over DNS. I'm going to break out the said video as a separate video <laughs> here and like process those two different videos here in a second. Um, but I'm going to keep going with the lecture right now. But I'm going to break this out as a separate video. Huh? Um, I can do a break right now. Okay, let's go ahead and do a break. We'll process this one. It won't take long because it didn't spend much time. And then we'll do DNS. Take like a 10 minute break.